with a decoupler with an integrated shroud in order to cover up those two smaller engines. And that is from the decoupler shrouded mod. We are grabbing our three 1.875 meter fuel tanks in order to create a first stage. And we are going to be basing that off a, uh, I believe, Titan modeled rocket engine. Uh, I don't quite remember what it's called. With not one, but two SRBs per side, just to provide a little bit more thrust and a little bit more fuel and essentially thrust. Basically, that's all we need. We need a flag just to look cool. I'm just adjusting that here. And we are just about ready to put this into orbit. I just had to add a little bit more fuel because of the extended uh, Delta V requirements due to the Je ne sais quoi mod. And we are just going to be doing a quick time lapse to throw this up into orbit, and I will see you in a second. up into approximately 120 kilometer orbit above the surface and we are just going to go ahead and hop back into the vehicle assembly building in order to build our rendezvous capsule ship that will be hosting two Kerbals uh, and bringing them up into this little tiny space station. So here we are in the VAB and we're just going to breeze through this. I'm starting with a command pod based on the Gemini mission, actually. That is from either either its stock or from the Making History expansion pack. I don't really remember at this point, but we have a couple of parachutes. We have a RCS module up top. That is from the Mole mod. Throwing a docking port on top of there with a decoupler in between. We're going to be throwing on a heat shield first, and then I believe a mole 
abort pack in the event that we need to actually abort. Uh, this is going to go on in a minute, but first we are going to create our upper stage, our service module, which is going to house our fuel for the rocket engine, life support stuff, batteries, solar panels, all the good stuff. So here we have our food and our oxygen, our gases that we need to live to keep our kerbals uh, sustained and alive, just adjusting their position there. Uh, we're grabbing our solar panels and pushing them into the fan just so it looks a little bit cleaner because that always looks good. I always thought it was kind of weird when you have all this stuff sticking off your rocket and Kerbal space program. I'm not going to stick to that, probably. I'll do it if, if it's convenient. If not, big whoop. Uh, not a big deal, in my opinion. So we're just attaching our RCS so we can actually make the dock, and we're just grabbing the previous rocket, the upper stage and lower stage, and our service module becomes a third stage. Here we are attaching the abort pack because I forgot about it. And then we are just going to hop up, get into orbit, and try and dock. And I will see you when we are making our rendezvous. Yeah. Uh. Baby, I ain't buying no more dreams. So, what you selling? My pockets got dry from the bullshit. But if you so for real, you could get it. But but not so much Don't wanna drown a flame Keep that fire lit Breathe life into it Now we own My place always stays true I won't give my body to nobody new Can you believe That we could be forever in heat If you get me to be six feet under stress Or if it's all just hold me down deep We won't burn out Here with me We could be Always in heat have to do it enough until you can kind of estimate when it looks right and that you'll meet it but that's usually maybe somewhere between 10 and 15 degrees 10 and 20 degrees or so I have played this game for like 800 hours so I just can eyeball it but here we are making our final approach as you can see I'm kind of not burning directly retrograde I'm pointing away from the target in order to push the retrograde target towards the target indicator if that makes sense 
and we are just time warping up to our encounter. Uh, I usually do this a little bit more aggressively than this, but nice and slow, just for YouTube's sake. Here we are, making our final approach, constantly adjusting my vectors instead of... I won't say it's in place of the um, lazy way, it's a more advanced version of the um, lazy way. And I have... I almost smashed into it there, but alas, we did not. That one made for good content, but I'm just too good of a pilot. No, I'm kidding. So basically, I was going to target the side docking port, but I wanted to ditch the bottom stage, and I realized we don't have any upper stages on that, so once we, so if we were to take the space station, burn retrograde, drop the lower fuel tank, we would fall with it because we would have no way of correcting our course, we don't have any engines on there, so uh, I decided to place the command pod on the other docking port in order to be able to deorbit that upper stage. So we are just adjusting our position. We actually accidentally dock, so just, just a couple puffs of RCS to get ourselves away from there. I mean, docking in je ne sais quoi 2.5x is not that much different than docking in regular Kerbal Space Program. You just have to adjust your timing slightly more tilt V, whatever, bigger rockets, but the procedure is exactly the same as in a uh, regular Kerbal Space Program. So we're just making our approach, setting our target, slow and steady. Actually, I saw this on Reddit, I don't remember quite where from. But sm slow is smooth, and smooth is fast. You want to do this fast, you have to be smooth, and if you want to be smooth, you have to go slow. Sure, you can just yellow it and smash into it, and hopefully it w you don't destroy anything important. But since I'm playing with Kerbalism, I would rather not. Plus, I can always speed it up in post. It's not that difficult. But here we are, we are just about to make our retrograde burn in order to drop that lower stage. Then we're going to use the command service module in order to boost our orbit back up into a stable orbit. And then we're going to transfer our crew and we are going to call it a night. So what's up for next time? Next time we are going to be designing our lander. We are going to be designing our orbiter. We are going to be putting together, hopefully, a launch vehicle can, that can take both of them up at the same time. That'd be pretty nice, but I don't think that's going to be feasible. So my plan is we're going to send the lander up first. Have that weight in low moonar orbit and then we're going to send our crew up separately. Why am I doing it this way? Because getting to the moon takes 1500 meters per second of delta V, and we do not have the capabilities of putting together a rocket that can move both of those uh, there at the same time. At least I don't think we do. I can try, I will try, but I don't think that is currently feasible with my current technology level. So we are going to be looking at bigger rockets, bigger rocket engines, bigger fuel tanks, bigger fairings. Uh, but that's for after we get back from the moon with all of that precious, precious science. And then we're going to be doing a very similar thing to Minmus. So I believe first we are going to be taking just a lander down there and then coming back and then we'll do a secondary mission where we all 
send up an additional fueling depot in order to be able to do hopping, uh, hopping on the surface of the Mun and Minmus, so we can get a little bit more size. To make this interesting, though, I am going to try and limit it to two biomes <coughs> worth of full science complements. So, Mr. Goo, Science Junior, Barometer, Thermometer dust experiments, any other experiments we get before then. But once we get that, then we are going to be setting our sights on Duna. And that's all I have for you today, so thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.